Okay, I just hit recording. So uh, I was talking about the list of risk factors that Maya listed out. And I think we can, first of all, segment them by uh, demographics, age, men, women, um, location. Then we can uh, segment them by uh, lifestyle, uh, smoking, drinking alcohol, uh, exercising. Then by um, associated existing uh, disorders, the diabetes or some... Uh, even HIV or any other co-occurring types of diseases. So we get some structure there. Um, yeah, so kind of just <clears throat> that would maybe help us um, provide some sort of like recommendations or something. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, so um, if you go back to, to the document that I've outlined and for the large impact section, because I tried to separate it into something super easy that we can kind of immediately achieve, just retrieving relevant bits of information. And that's what uh, most of the people were focusing on uh, within existing notebooks. Um, and there is large impact, which is being able to actually predict probability of results for each stage of disease and identify core relationships between each of the stages of disease and ma main risk factors. Obviously, for the for, risk factors, sorry to interrupt. Um, go ahead. Is there a way that we can look at, you know, so I assume that this is coming from the papers and then trying to actually extract these via NLP. Um, can, is there any way that we can try to associate a score with these? So, for example, you know, like, I think that for somebody who's acting on this, something like knowing that, oh, okay, this is a smoker, then this is a much, much bigger worry. Um, or if this is like a, you know, like I guess males has come up, you know, like maybe this is a bigger worry so that, so that somebody can sort of rank order what these effects are in a coarse manner. Yeah, I think that's the way to think about it just for diagnostic purposes and for people that are dealing with patients. Uh, in terms of score, do you have an idea how to transform um, just you know, bits of information from the papers to the actual like continuous um, data? So that I do not. I mean, I, I guess we could look at more bit. Well, I, I, I don't know whether or not we are able to extract, for example, uh, mortality. I mean, that would be a sort of a binary um, outcome of, um, okay, if the person recovered or didn't recover, then depending on how much variation there is in the population and in the papers, then that may help us get at which risk factors are more important than others. Hey, uh, can, I, can I make a comment? Um, so the, uh, I think it certainly sounds like a doable um, machine, uh, machine learning or machine reading task to sort of run through all these papers and uh, assess for each one to what extent is this paper referring to age or referring to obesity or, or whatever the topics are. In terms of extracting quantitative information or rankings, I think we have to keep in mind that most of these papers are not actually about COVID-19. Um, and so if you wanted to make uh, some actionable statement, we would have to have a metric for how similar the thing being studied is in this paper to COVID-19. And that's a more involved question. But, but at least the question of dealing with to what extent do these papers relate to issues of age or gender or, or whatever issue we're, we're talking about, that seems like a well-defined question. That's a great point. So maybe we actually, like as one of the immediate tasks that we can present to NLP uh, teams, and there are plenty of NLP people that are just waiting for some specific task, actually creating some uh, similarity metrics for like risk factors when it comes to uh, viral diseases, something like that. Uh, one thing, just to jump in real quick, um, on the note of uh, <clears throat> of analyzing what may be most similar to uh, COVID nineteen, I did have a notebook and that I where I basically just did a BM twenty five um, search over some keywords. Um, and I mean, obviously that can help give some sort of uh, 
ranking as to what's similar to the, the keywords you're specifying, but I think it would be useful maybe if we can have domain experts that have insight into what may be similar. For example, I've seen articles about how SARS is, mo is very similar to this um, virus. So maybe then we could also include some weight to SARS papers and maybe annotate that as, as separate in mm -hmm. our output. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I do think it may be useful to get some sort of um, insight as to what viruses may be similar. And this is kind of a meta thing for all of the tasks. Yeah, agree. And I think we can actually go ahead and assume certain things and just make it, you know, very clear that these are the keywords that we're considering as, you know, the ones that give us the most relevancy and tell the, the medical expert uh, to validate that assumption. And basically, the only thing that will change uh, in terms of the technology will change that uh, keyword matrix and then rerun the, the computation. Right. Um, and then another note I want to uh, make is something that we haven't discussed much that I've seen uh, in this uh, community is the idea of maybe annotating our data set because I know it's a lot of examples, but I do think that something that could pay off a lot is if we could have some people, especially some of the experts, give us some annotations. We'd have to figure out exactly what we want, but um, for things that are like numerical, like you were originally discussing, um, it would be a lot more helpful if we had that. Yeah, and uh, maybe there is a way to um, to do that on a limited subset of papers that pertain specifically f to uh, stages of disease. And we could try and uh, basically um, segment papers by the ones that are talking about the exposure, about the acquisition, uh, development, complications, and fatality disability as uh, core stages. And then we can take, um, assuming that uh, the resulting data will make sense to us, we can take those and ask um, and kind of crowdsource the annotation across a couple of different medical experts. What do we have in the way of annotation uh, resources? Um... So there are, uh, I would say there are at least five, 10 people that have some form of medical education that can help us create some basic structure. There is this Savannah um, woman that actually has uh, legit domain expertise, uh, meaning beyond general medical expertise that could help and you know, quickly validate the results that other general medical experts are gonna uh, provide. Uh, but that's about it for right now. We are, the, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say on the annotation side, I know that Daniel Lee has also offered their team at Scale AI to help with free data annotation. So if we can tell them what it is that we need um, as far as annotation goes, then, then they may be able to help a little bit with that. Hmm. So here's what I would propose as a task, and maybe someone can uh, transform it into something uh, more structured. Um, I would take the Z stages, and I would do the topic modeling on the existing data set and try to find uh, parts of the research papers that are uh, talking specifically about the stage of disease. Because I would assume there are papers about SARS and others that are not necessarily about, um, you know, specifically acquisition of disease, but there is a subsection of that paper that is describing the transmission, acquisition, or potential complications. Okay, so you're proposing um, coming at this from like a um, analysis of just grouping the papers based on which ones are relevant to what stage of the disease, right? Yeah, and just seeing what the results look like. If that gives us a meaningful subset that is smaller than, you know, 10,000 papers, uh, we can then push it into scale AI and, um, you know, organize some small uh, group of medical experts to help and, you know, just provide more more knowledge 
um, of theirs in, into this process. Okay. Unless someone has a better idea. No, I think that sounds like a good plan. Okay. Um, so, in, do you have anyone who's who has significant NLP experience here right now? I wouldn't consider myself as having significant experience, but I mean, I know enough that I could probably, with a set of keywords, run BM25 searches or something and see what comes up. Uh, and you've done some notebook already on, on similar stuff, right? What's yeah. the, the name of this notebook? Uh, let me see. Or if you can send a link in Slack. Yeah. So th this notebook was basically a combination of a few other notebooks for the most part um, with just some glue in between. <clears throat> it was, um, let's see. The links in the chat now. Okay. Yeah, it, it, I basically just used BM25 to come up with a subset of documents that fit uh, some keywords that I found from somebody else's uh, LDA topic modeling notebook. And then I, I then ranked within those documents uh, just basically with cosine similarity of queries, which is another notebook. Um, and where is the list of them. keywords? Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, SARS cov uh, SARS coronavirus seventh yep. line, right? Yeah. So I know an update as of recently was I think Brandon was either working on it. I don't know if I ever saw his output, but he was, um, I think, trying to get vectorizations of like COVID nineteen or something or mm -hmm. some sorts of uh, of new vectorizations. So that could help, but I haven't seen this yet. Okay, and I mean this makes sense as as if we are framing the, the request to find the papers that pertain to COVID-19 and coronavirus. But, you know, if, if we're talking about similar viral diseases, obviously, you know, there are differences in those, but there are some basic, um, you know, body, uh, bodily responses to it. I mean, people with um, low immune uh, response are, are reacting in similar ways. People that are not drinking up water are having similar type of outcomes or people that drink a lot of alcohol or smoke um, also have much higher risks to contract even basic flu or you know different strains of uh, flu or, or hair, herpes and other types of viruses. So maybe... Yeah. Sorry, so I, I didn't mean to speak of you, Karen. Yeah, so I mean, maybe it's actually worth expanding um, these keywords and creating kind of the general viral type of uh, vector. Yeah, I, I agree. What I was going to say was, um, I mean, I think we would already be doing a valuable service to the community of researchers just by providing uh, a list of, of all the papers that pertain to studies of uh, obesity or all the papers that pertain to studies of um, smoking, you know, in connection with the virus, because it's not easy to pull those things out of these big data sets. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, so and, and then the experts could do the work of figuring out which ones, are, which of those papers are relevant for them, you know, which ones are about viruses, that are nothing like COVID. Maybe that's something that they have more expertise. Well, they definitely have more expertise to do than we do. Okay. Um, okay, that, that makes sense. So it sounds like there are a couple of ideas here. The first one, try and do the topic modeling on the stages of disease and go from, from there and see what kind of outcomes we see. The second way is uh, go directly to the, the risk factor and extract the, the relevant papers that, um, you know, mention at least something about those topics, like ob obesity or diabetes related uh, papers, right? Right. And, uh, and I think the third one is actually expanding this uh, keyword uh, vector and trying to hit 
um, more than just uh, coronavirus or SARS and capture the, the risk uh, factors of many other viral diseases to try and extrapolate some learnings and to allow medical experts to you know, connect these things together. Um, is it possible, though, that medical experts would already know what um, sort of normal presenting symptoms and connections are? I mean, just from their heuristics? Uh, can you give an example? Well, I'm, I'm not a doctor. I, I mean, I'm just thinking that, you know, like if you are a doctor, you've probably seen things like the flu before. You've probably seen things like strep throat. You've probably seen a number of diseases in normal, normal practice. And then at least in the West, you know, this is going to be something that's new for you. Um, mm -hmm. And so I, I guess my question is, is, you know, like, is that a value add for the, for the medical community? Yeah, and I think it is in in different way, because um, if we're talking about diagnostics or, you know, physicians, yeah, they pro most probably have all of these heuristics based on their experience or, you know, just by reading papers or studying medical practice, but we're trying to, we're kind of playing in this multidisciplinary field right now where there are some biologists that are just focusing on creating the vaccine and don't really understand the underlying uh, factors and how, you know, all of these things come together. So it's, you know, a lot of it is about bridging many different things together. And I think it's still valuable to showcase even the things that may look obvious to some physicians, just because some other people that don't have physician background or experience may have, uh, you know, aha moment when they explore these papers that talk about that specific risk factor. Uh, so a real quick uh, a question I have is, I, I kind of want to uh, try focusing a little bit on the like outcome that we actually want to produce. Um, and so that in this case, that would be uh, the like a cluster of documents that pertain to, you know, like you said, a particular stage of the disease or maybe a particular risk factor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's uh, the, the small impact that we can do right now in a day or two, just to retrieve knowledge. Okay, that makes sense, yeah. Because to give you an example why I'm thinking about the kind of the holistic view of how all things play together, um, just from my personal uh, experience of reading medical papers and following a couple of uh, those, you know, weird diseases that uh, just crossed my path of, um, for example, there is this uh, cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome, which is a result of a long-term cannabis uh, use. Uh, people that uh, smoked uh, marijuana for 15, 20 years consistently for in large amounts developed uh, a syndrome that causes them to consistently throw up. And the reason why it happens, and by the recent research, uh, people identified, researchers identified that it's actually because and there are cannabinoid receptors that also uh, affect how our stomach, um, you know, works in general. And the reason why they understood the, the connection was the fact that those people that were throwing up were getting a relief from jumping into very hot showers. And the reason why it helped them was because the same cannabinoid receptors actually help uh, and regulate the thermal response of the body. So in a way, they just put, you know, different things together and realized that, um, you know, cause and effect, even though there was no immediate connection. And in the same way, they started prescribing capsaicin, which is the uh, component that makes uh, hot peppers uh, spicy, uh, to those patients for immediate relief. People would put uh, the, the cream on their stomach, it would activate the thermal response and cannabinoid receptors, and they would stop throwing up. I see. 
Again, I'm not so, a medical expert. That's just my, you know, own research and understanding and trying to understand how, you know, holistic uh, approach works. So you're thinking and leaving it that at least researchers may be able to derive some things from that that otherwise wouldn't be possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, we're dealing with, with a very new phenomenon that obviously is not easy to solve and there might be some uh you know aha moment once we formulate this foundation and knowledge base that they can explore navigate and ideally in a week or two we may have some interface for them to kind of you know go through and just like navigate as most people navigate youtube or google or wikipedia right now you go uh, you know link by link and you just explore different things that are relevant to the topic. Sure. So at the very least, I think this sort of clustering of documents is going to be a prerequisite for almost anything. So, yeah. um, so I think it'll be useful and it can be done quickly. And ideally, if we can find somebody that can do it quickly, mm -hmm. um, that would be great. I'm not going to have time for a couple of days, um, but there may be somebody else, especially somebody with more experience, who may be able to help get this done quickly. Sounds good. All right, uh, does anyone have any other ideas or, or something to, to share before I wrap it up? All right, sounds good guys. Thanks a lot for jumping in. I do feel that we've, we've uh, achieved some uh, direction. I'll try to find someone to help us with the, the specific clustering for risk factors and we'll, we'll go from there. Hopefully people- okay, Are you gonna edit to the- are you going to edit the Trello board? Yep. I'll add the Great. test to Trello board. I'll share this recording of the video. Hopefully more people will jump in uh, during my night and have uh, some ideas. And also Maya may uh, further structure the risk factors for us to have a more efficient clustering. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Thank All right. you. Sounds good. Thank you. Good night. Bye.